In this lesson, we're looking at arcs and angles formed by intersecting chords, secants, and tangents. This is one of our longer lessons because I tried to give you an example of each type of problem. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the lesson. Since we're going to be discussing the secant, secant chord and tangent of a circle, let's go ahead and just review what they are. Now, a secant is a line that intersects the circle at exactly two points. So we have the secant here right here and it's a line and it is intersecting a circle or intersects a circle at two points a chord is actually a segment so we have the chord right here and it's a segment with the endpoints on a circle so we have our endpoints right here so the endpoints are on the circle and then the tangent intersects the circle at exactly one point so um, here's a tangent line right here and we see here it intersects that circle at exactly one point. That one point is called the point of tendency. All right, so now let's get into some problems using um, the secant chord and tangent of circles. Now when chords, secants, and tangents intersect in a circle, on a circle, or outside of a circle, they form special relationships that exist between the angle and the arc measures form. So we can see here in figure one, um, there's a special relationship when they intersect inside of the circle. There's a special relationship when it intersects on this circle right here, as well as outside of the circle. I'm going to go over um, a few examples of each type of intersection and have you try some on your own. And we're going to go ahead and get started with the intersection inside of the circle. Looking at the interior intersections or intersections inside of the circle, if two secants or chords intersect inside the circle, then the measure of the angle formed is equal to half the sum of the measures of the intersected arcs. So looking at this figure here, we have um, angle one here. We could say that the measure of angle one is equal to one half, the one half times the measure of um, arc AD. So arc AD is here plus the measure of arc BC. So the arcs that they intersect, um, you take half of their sum. At you. So you add them together and you take half of the sum. Uh, next we have the measure of angle two. So the measure of angle two, so looking at arc AB and DC, that is one half. So the measure of angle two is one half the measure of arc AB plus the measure of arc CD. Now we're going to use these rules to solve some problems. All right, so let's take a look at these first three problems. So example 1A, we want to find the measure of angle AED, which is right here. And we're given the arcs that we need, which is arc AD and arc BC. So we can simply say, that the measure of angle AED is one half of 45 plus 109 because these are the arcs that are formed by this intersection here. And then we simplify 45 plus 109 is 154. Half of 154 is 77. So measure of arc AED is 77 degrees. Let's look at um, 1B here. So it says the measure of angle YWX, which is here. So we're not given the arcs that we need, but we can use the information that we're given to find um, this angle here. So we're given arc YV and arc uh, XZ. So we can use that to actually find <clears throat> uh, these angles here. We can use that to find this angle here. So I could say that one half uh, 43 plus 81 that gives me 124 and half of that is 62 so I found this angle here because I have these arcs that I'm using so this angle is 64 and this is what kind of angles here the supplementary uh, because they are a linear pair remember root word for linear is line how many degrees are in a line? 180. 
So we could simply subtract 180 minus 64 to get the measure of um, this angle here. And that is equal to 118. So the measure of this angle here is 118, which is angle YWX. All right. So the last one, um, so we want to find the measure of arc CDE. So CDE, which is this major arc right here. This large arc right here. And so we're given um, the angle here. So in the other cases, we were looking for the angles. So in this case, we're given the angle. So we could set up our equation a little differently. So the angle is actually equal to one half of those arcs. So um, we have 73 here. We don't know what the measure of this arc is, which is arc CDE, which is what we're looking for. So I'm just going to call it X. So arc CDE is arc X because that's what we're looking for. So in the other problems, we were given um, the arcs. Um, in this one, we're not given the arc. We actually have to find it. So this 128 degrees is the, the inside angle, just like um, what we were looking for on the other ones. So just simplifying it. Um, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 actually to get rid of. Instead of using the distributive property, I think it's easier to get rid of this one half by just multiplying both sides by 2. Um, so just some algebra skills. And 128 times 2. That is 256. Let me bring my equal sign down here. All right, so 256. That one half cancels out. I'm left with a one step equation. Subtract 73. So x is equal to 183 degrees. And we label arc CDE as x. And so arc CDE is 183 degrees. Alright, so of course I want you to try some on your own. Go ahead and pause the video and try these problems on your own. Alright, so for A you should have gotten 149 degrees, B 50 degrees, and C 107 degrees if you did not get so hopefully you got them correct but if you did not pause the video and analyze my work here just a little more now let's take a look of intersections on the circle if a secant and a tangent intersect at a point of tangency so our point of tangency is point a right here then the measure of each angle form is equal to half the measure of its intersected arc. So looking at angle 1, the intersected arc is arc AB right here. So we could say that the measure of angle 1 is equal to 1 half the measure of arc AB. All right. And we're naming using only two letters because that is a minor arc. It is less than 180. Now let's look at angle 2 right here. The intercepted arc is this major arc here, arc um, BCA or ACB. So we can say that the measure of angle 2 is 1 half the measure of arc ACB or we could say arc BCA. That's the arc. <laughs> All right, so example 3. We want to find the measure of angle DBC. So angle D, B, C, this angle right here. So using this circle, remember how many degrees are there in a circle? There are 360 degrees in a circle. Hopefully you remember that. So 360 minus 192 is 168. So I'm just finding the arc. So this arc here is 168. So of course to find it, we just take half. So the measure of arc of angle DBC is equal to one half um, the measure of the arc, which is 168, the intersected arc. So that would be 84. 84. 
So my intercepted arc was right here at 168, which we'll is take half of it. Now let's look at the measure of angle or B, which is we want to find the major arc um, K and M. So K and M. So all of this right here. So um, we could find this angle here. Um, right here. So if this angle is 23. This angle here, M, this angle MKL, that would be 180 minus 23. And that gives me 157. So this angle here is 157 degrees. And so instead of, so the arc would be, um, so the angle would be half the arc. So in order to find the arc, we just double it. So the measure of the arc would be twice the measure of angle K MKL. So that would be twice 157. That gives me 314. All right. So the arc is half, the angle is half of the arc and um, the arc is double the angle. All right, so I have two for you to try here. Go ahead and pause the video and try these two on your own. So you should have gotten 154 and 58 for the second one. Hopefully you got them correct. If not, pause the video and analyze my work here a little more. All right, so the last rule we're going to look at is for exterior intersections. As you can see, all of the intersections are on the outside of uh, the circle here. So if a secant and or tangents intersect on the exterior of a circle, then the measure of the angle form is equal to half the difference of the intercepted arcs. So now we have the difference. So if we have two secants here, the measure of angle A will be equal to the measure one half the measure of angle of arc CE minus arc BD. So CE minus BD, we're taking half of it. Next, we got a secant and a tangent, very similar arc BD, which is here, minus BC, again, subtracting them and taking half. And then last, we have the major arc here, BDC, so all the way around minus uh, BC, which is here, subtracting that and taking half of it. Those are all equal to angle A, which is the intersection on the outside of the circle. So let's go ahead and work out some problems. All right, so let's try these four problems. So just remember that we're basically subtracting the smaller arc from the larger arc and taking half of that um, the result there. So looking at the first one here, we want to find the measure of angle KLM. So K L M would be right here. So to find that, let me put it in red so you can see it. So K L M. So to find that, that would just be one half of 140, which is this angle here, or arc minus 66. And simplifying. 140 minus 66 is 74. So that would be 37 degrees. This is a degree symbol. So the measure of this angle is 37 degrees. Let's look at um, number or 5B. We want to find arc SW. So arc SW is this arc right here. So we're going to set it up just a little differently. So our angle, so our exterior angle is 40. That is equal to one half. We don't know what SW is, so I'm just going to call it X. So X minus 75. So our exterior angle is equal to um, one half of the two intersect, um, the difference of the two intersected arcs. So mo just solving for X here, algebra skills. Get rid of that one half by multiplying both sides by two. And look for 80 is equal to X minus 75, adding 75, and not 5, 80 plus, plus 75. 
that will leave me with 155. So X is 155, so SW is 155 degrees. All right, looking at this third one here, the measure of angle PQR. So we have our arc right here, so that would be uh, one half, 313 minus 47. And how do I know that that is 47, this arc here? Well, because in a circle, it's 360 degrees, so I'm just subtracting 313 from 360, and that gives me 47 degrees there. So uh, 313 minus 47 is 266. Taking half of that, I get 133 degrees. All right. The last one here, um, we have EF. So we're given our exterior angle, or we want to find EF. So we're given our exterior angle that is equal to, that is 77. That is equal to this angle here. So one half, 191 minus we don't know what this angle is, so I'm going to call it X, but that's not what we're looking for, but we need it to find EF. So I'm going to call it X, solving for X, multiplying both sides by 2 to get rid of that one half. Again, algebra skills, so 2 times 74 is 154, um, 191 minus X. One step equation, subtracting 191, that is negative 37 equals negative X. So, of course, we divide by negative 1, so X is just 37. So, this angle here is 37. So, how do we find arc EF? Well, this arc here is 37, not angle. So, this arc here is 37. So, we got 191 and we got 37 here for this piece of the circle. Again, remember there are 360 degrees in a circle. So, ran out of room, so I'm just going to write it at the top here. 360 minus 191 minus 37 is equal to 132 degrees. And so EF, which is the rest of the circle left, is 132 degrees. And so that is the measure of arc. EF 132 degrees. So now let's try some on your own. So I know this has been a long lesson, but these are the last three problems I would like for you to try on your own. All right, so go ahead and check your answers here 24, 74, and 74. If you did not get them correct, hopefully you did. But if you did not, go ahead and pause the video and analyze my work here just a little more. So we've reached the end of our lesson. I want to thank you for learning with me. Some related videos are tangent lines, parts one and two, and arc lengths in a circle. If you haven't already, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And once again, I want to thank you for learning with me.